Welcome to Brandon Farm. I haven't been down here as much as I want to here lately. It's been so hot. And then at night, we usually take turns on who waters the garden. So last night, I didn't get to come down here and water. My husband did. I got to deal with the children. Um, so today, I'm going to go around my garden and just kind of see what I need to harvest. Um, see if I have any pest problems, anything like that. Um, anything I need to trim up. So right now I need to harvest my tomatoes because I'm noticing that something is getting my Roma tomatoes and I'm pretty sure I have a good idea on what it is. We have a lot of little like what I call Chi Chi birds um, that come and just hang out in my tomato plants and I'm pretty sure they're eating all the ripe ones. So I need to go ahead and get all of my red tomatoes and probably some of my deeper orange tomatoes off the tomato plants otherwise I'm going to lose them and then I just lose out. All the ones that have been chewed up, I'm gonna go ahead and give to the chickens. They'll think it's a nice little treat, but they don't go, they don't go to waste. So everything gets reused as much as possible. So I'm gonna create a little pile for them. There's quite a few. These are my Roma tomatoes and they are not, they're not getting very long like a Roma tomato usually is. These are more of like a round tomato and I'm not really sure what the deal is there unless somebody switched the tags on me. I did get all of these tomato uh, starts from our local nursery here in town. So it very well could have been switched. So instead of waiting for them to uh, become oval, I'm going to go ahead and just harvest them now. I'm not seeing any insects or any kind of pest problem at this time, but I do have a lot of birds flying over me. Like little Chi Chi birds, like I said, is what we call them. You know, they're just a small, <clears throat> small bird variety. So I'm thinking that's a lot to do with uh, my problem. Another thing you want to look out for are the tomato hornworms. A lot of people say to give them to your chickens if you find them. My chickens are quite picky and they don't want them, so they will not eat them. The tomato hornworms, they can be very um, hard to find. They can disguise themselves really well. And just before your eyes, you should just glance right over them and not even see them at all. What I like to look for is anything moving in your plants. Another thing you want to look out for is any of the lower leaves that are on the ground. Um, that's going to make your plant susceptible to rot or the fungus, and that would not be good. So just something to watch out for when you're harvesting these lower fruit. These ones are the red cherry variety. This one is not quite totally red, but it will ripen on my counter. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull it. These little ones, these little tiny ones are a sweet 100 variety. They taste really good. Let's go see what's on the back side of these. So these way back here on this far corner are called the better bush. They have a different leaf to them. They're kind of like a fuzzy leaf. And I've noticed that all of my tomatoes that I get from them are just cracking. And I don't know why. So I just let the chickens have these for the most part, but I gotta figure this out. So 
So I'm not really sure what happened with this one. It kind of looks like two tomatoes grew together. Uh, I do have a lot of cracking in this. This particular variety is the Cherokee Purple. And I was really excited about these. And actually I did grow one decent one and they taste so good. Um, so I'm not really sure <laughs> what happened, but uh, I'm gonna check the other ones. <laughs> So here's kind of a look inside the tomato madness. This is where I got that deformed tomato from and you can see all of these other ones are cracking or like they have some sort of worm on them and it's really hard to weed in there too so you're gonna see a lot of grass. Uh, you can see down there I have one maybe decent purple Cherokee. I'm gonna try to get that one out see if I can make it work. Say hello to the newest and latest and greatest Barbie. Nice little fluffy butt there. So what I like to look for when harvesting a tomato um, is the firmness of the tomato and the color of the tomato. I would say this one's a pretty perfect tomato. It's got good coloring to it, no cracks. It's got a little bit of discoloring there at the top. This one's gonna taste real good. Nice and firm, not squishy. Um, if it's squishy, you might have a, a worm in there of some kind or a pest. I would watch out for the squishy ones. Either that or they've rotted and they're no good at that point. At that point, I would probably compost them, but then you kind of run the risk of growing tomato plants in your compost pile. For us, it's just gonna go to the chickens if they're no good. I did harvest three pretty decent looking purple Cherokees. Pretty excited about those. They make a great addition to a salad. So later on, I wanna discuss further um, in hard pruning your tomatoes. Um, this is something that I just started doing this season and I actually really appreciate it because then I can actually see all of the fruit that's growing on my lower tomato plants and it's easier to get to and I don't feel like I'm gonna break every single branch when I'm reaching into the tomato forest. <laughs> so I actually really appreciate hard pruning but we'll get into that later. This tomato plant here is called a brandy wine tomato plant. Let me get the tag for you. I always stick the tags, the ones that they come with, I go ahead and stick them in front of the plant, just on the edge of my border. So this one's a tomato brandy wine. Again, this one's kind of like that better bush where it's got the weird kind of close together leaves. But for some reason, this one is turning a little yellow on the inside. And I'm not sure if that's a lack of nitrogen or maybe just a lack of sunshine. She does kind of get dwarfed by some of these other plants here. And I need to figure out what's going on. So I'm gonna go ahead and trim her up and see if I can help her out. Let me tell you, I did not think this through when I planted all these tomato plants. <laughs> I've got another one here. This is a new variety for me. It's the Lemon Boy Tomato. Um, I had two on there that were not yellow, they were orange. And I think I let them go a little too long. They're a little on the soft side. I'm not sure if they're supposed to go from green to yellow or green to orange to yellow. Or if maybe I, like I said, just left them too long. Let me show you what they look like. They're a little discolored. I don't know. I mean, it's a good size tomato. Don't get me wrong, but it's not really yellow like the picture. And it does feel a little on the squishy side, which makes me think I left it a little too long. And by what I said when I said I didn't plan this out good enough, right below me is a rose bush that I thought was gonna be so lovely out here in my garden. And it is, but it's in the wrong spot for harvesting these tomatoes. You can tell these tomatoes have just taken off and they are huge and intertwined with each other. And I mean, I love it, but they're really hard to harvest. Okay, so what I'm noticing on these tomato plants is the insides of my plants, the leaves, the lower foliage and the inside foliage is turning yellow. So 
in my mind, from my experience, that could be a lack of nitrogen um, or it could just be a lack of sun because they're like overgrown and they're just entangled with each other and they're just not getting enough sunlight. What I'm gonna do on my side of things is just fertilize. I like to use the fish emulsion. It's disgusting, let me tell you, it stinks. And it's like about as thick as molasses. I got the concentrate version, so I would mix like a capful per gallon or whatever the bottle says. So I like to fertilize with the fish emulsion as I see fit, but also probably at least twice a month. Um, is what I'm finding that my plants thrive on. So I'm probably going to do that tonight or today while the sun is not so hot out. And that way I can water this evening and it won't be an, a huge issue. Um, when you water your plants or fertilize them, it's kind of best, in my opinion, to not do it in the heat of the day. Um, you don't want your plants to stress out or get sun scald if the water sits on those leaves or the fertilizer sits on the leaves and then the sun comes out and basically burns up your leaves. Uh, and that's not good for the plant, clearly. It would be like burning off one of my arms. No, I'm joking. Um, so, I'll probably fertilize with the fish emulsion just to see how that does. Another thing I like to do is put the worm castings out. I put the worm castings in the soil and around the base of the plant. So I like to put out the worm castings to add nutrients to the soil. Another thing that I'll combat, um, like a lack of nitrogen or lack of sun, is again hard pruning my plants so I can get that sunlight coming in from the top. Um, and get good airflow here in the bottom. You can see on some of these tomato plants, I've already hard pruned most of them um, from the outside, but the very middle is really hard to get into. I'm not doing that again. I'm telling you, I messed up whenever I planted all these tomato plants so close together. In such a big bed, I can't get to the middle of these plants to hard prune them, to harvest, to anything. So that's why the middle, I think, is turning yellow and shriveling and dying uh, next year. We're gonna have a better plan for that. I'm gonna go ahead and give all of these not so great tomatoes to the chickens. They're gonna eat them up and they're gonna love it. So I'm gonna come directly across from my tomato bed into my other big bed. I just wanna point out that my zinnias are finally blooming. I've been waiting on these suckers for so long now. The foliage looks pretty well, except for at the bottom. It's getting a little mm, not so great at the bottom. Um, but the tops are just phenomenal. And I'm loving the color. So another thing I want to check on this side of the bed is my broccoli. So if you come down here, this is my broccoli. I have two plants of broccoli and I just I want to let them get a little bigger they're a little on the small side I'm gonna let those bush out a little bit but let me show you what else I have to harvest today the thing I'm gonna harvest today is my eggplant I have two eggplants that are ready to be harvested um, I don't really know the right time other than you want a firm fruit not squishy firm and I think it's about the size of your hand. Is a good way to, good way to measure it. So I have two. I currently have one down here. Let me show you. Right here. Um, I put I put this little dress uh, in here, yard art as a way to kind of trellis the eggplant to give it a little bit more support because these eggplants can be pretty heavy um, but this one here is ready to pick so i'm going to go ahead and cut it right at the base where the base meets the plant just gonna chop it right off and there you have it an eggplant ready to eat anybody want eggplant parmesan so I have one more I'm gonna go ahead and cut. Um, it's kind of deep in here, so I can't get the camera in. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut it off. 
and there's my other one. So now I have two eggplants. I do have a third one growing, but it's not quite big enough yet. So I'm gonna go ahead and let it just continue to grow and get bigger with time. And I do have a few blossoms on here too that are gonna produce more eggplants. So my eggplant's doing really well. So another thing I'm gonna harvest is gonna be my okra. Um, the more, to my knowledge, the more you harvest your okra, the more it will produce. So I like to come out here and check it daily. A firm, but not too firm because I think the more firm you get and the longer you leave your okra on the plant, it's not gonna taste as good as if you harvest it more often and when it's not so hard. So, and I also have these, I have a problem with these pests and I can't figure out what kind of bug they are. Growing up, I used to call them sharpshooters because they would sit in like the leaves of the crepe myrtles and just spit on you. And my dad always called them sharpshooters. I don't know if that's exactly what they're called, but that's what I always call them. And I'm just spraying them with a little Dawn soap um, just to kind of keep it a little bit more organic because my kids come out here a lot and I don't really want insecticides on my plants if I can help it. So I'm gonna go ahead and harvest a couple of these okras. This is kind of a good example. This one actually might be a little bit too overgrown. It's pretty hard, it's pretty firm um, to the touch. Uh, it's probably okay, but this one did get a little bit longer than I wanted it to, but I'm sure it's gonna taste fine. Uh, one thing I will say is if you're local, we have a farmer's market stand out in our front yard. Um, it's honor system only. I don't charge for anything. Um, it's just take what you need for your family because we have excess. With okra, I don't really eat okra. My mother-in-law used to eat okra all the time, like fried okra. And I've never really been into it. So most of my okra is going to go up to the farmer's market. So you're welcome to it if you want some. One other okra on here that I'm gonna go ahead and harvest. It's a little on the small side, but it's still a little squishy. Um, and by squishy, I mean it's not super firm, but it will harden up over time. I don't want it to go too long um, just because it kind of looks ready to harvest. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Same thing, I'm just gonna cut it right at the base where the okra meets the plant. So now I have two. You can see the size difference here. Um, it just feels like it's ready. It may not be. It does look a little bit lighter green in color compared to the larger one, but this is not a grocery store. They're gonna grow differently. So I'll tell you what, if it was a snake, it would have bit me. Uh, these cucumber plants get real pokey and I don't like the way they feel, so I like to use gloves with them because sometimes I have to maneuver them around the trellis so that way they're growing up and not out. Um, but this one here caught me by surprise. I don't even know if you can see it. Let's see if I can get it better. Which one's blocking it? Right in there. Didn't even realize it was there until I was uh, re-trellising this uh, cucumber plant. But here it is and I'm gonna go ahead and harvest it because it's kind of mm, looking. So I'm going to trim this right at the base of the plant. I'm just going to snip it right off. And you can see what I'm talking about. It looks like it got looks like it got a little deformed on its growth pattern. That's the only one I see. I don't see any more. So this might be our only cucumber. But it's our first one. So I think that's all I'm going to harvest for today. Got a pretty good basket going here of everything that I've picked. Um, like I said, if you're local, we've got a farmer's market out front. Um, donations are welcome. If you want to leave canned goods, you're more than welcome to dry goods. Just no perishables. That's all I have for you today. Um, just my little harvesting video of my backyard garden. On to the next video. 
nice looking eggplants, deformed looking cucumber, lots of tomatoes. And don't forget the farm fresh eggs.